Traction control is now standard on all BMWs because we all have places to go. Foot action. To me, foot action is working my game until I can take my own shadow. Action is also where you find the latest basketball shoes from Reebok, like the Aftershock. For every action, there's foot action. The jobs of tomorrow are here. Thousands of them, waiting to be filled. But you have to know the fields they're in, and you have to have what it takes to master those fields. Because you can't get the jobs of tomorrow until you get the skills of today. Start by calling ITT Technical Institute will send you an informative brochure on tomorrow's careers and what it takes to get them. Call 1-800-942-0099. Presenting a space-age innovation from televised college basketball. It's called ESPN Full Court. It gives you tons of great college hoops action you couldn't get otherwise. Call your cable operator or direct TV for ESPN Full Court. Welcome back to Darlington International Dragway, where the All-Pro Auto Parts Winter Nationals continue. Right now it's time for this year's first edition of Drag Review. Here's Brett Kepner with all of the news. In the last year, the sport of drag racing has been rocked by a series of team car efforts which have produced impressive results, working with not one, but several drivers working for a common goal. Well, International Harvard Association Drag Racing has been no stranger to the team car concept. You might remember Roy Hill and Mike Bell with their two-car punch in the World Championship Pro Stock standings last year, or for that matter, a few seasons ago when Scotty Cannon teamed with Pete Williams for a two-car pro mod effort. For 1996, however, there are a couple that are going to stand out. One of them in Top Fuel Eliminator involves Virgil Hartman, Rhonda Hartman's dad and the team owner, and a brand new Top Fuel car of Bruce Litton, the trailer manufacturer from Indianapolis who's moved up from Top Dragster Eliminator. Now, along with Rhonda and Bruce Litton, Pro Modified will see the most two-car action this year. Tommy Mooney, the reigning world champion in debuting a brand new 63 Corvette Stingray, has teamed with his old car and good friend Shannon Jenkins driving the 41 Willys that won the world title last year. Scotty Cannon announced his own two-car team with match race veteran Hugh Scott at the wheel of the Willys that Cannon drove last year and Cannon himself at the wheel of a new Corvette. However, the biggest shock of this whole story came when Scotty Cannon simultaneously created his new two-car team and then at the same Winter Nationals event vaporized it. He decided not to campaign a two-car operation. We'll know what's going to happen this year with the two-car team effort when we see each team line up two cars on the racetrack. Until then, however, it seems to be a straightforward approach at picking up points for at least two of those operations, with Scotty Cannon deciding maybe the best way is to just stick as Scotty Cannon. That's this edition of Drag Review. All right, thanks, Brett. Sometimes you can outthink yourself in this sport. Top Fuel semifinals, there is Jack Ostrander. A proven national event winner, number one qualifier, going up against number five, Rit Pustari from Connecticut. Pustari having problems. Look at the smoke pouring out of that thing. Something isn't right. However, Ostrander had a gate job put on him, but now starts pulling away. 5'11", 280 miles per hour. Well, not the four-second pass he wanted, but uh, he'll take it. Interesting pass for both drivers. Watch the car in the left lane, Pustari. Mechanical problems with all of that raw fuel spilling from the left bank of cylinders. Pretty straight run for Jack, although he gets close to the center line right there. Well, Jack Ostrander looked like the king of his racetrack in qualifying now almost a half month later. It looks like you might get a chance to prove it in race time. That was nice. Well, the thing broke the first round and it broke again that round Which before break? the lights. It's got the rods out of it probably, but it... it uh, it broke up. It didn't have any smoke at all out of it. Oh, it's got oil everywhere. Oh, yeah, it does. You're right. It, it broke. That's why I clicked it off. It went to 90. I'll tell you what. If you can get it to do it one more time, you may have this thing locked. That's all I want. See ya. Well, that's interesting. Jack may have the performance in hand if he can keep the motor together. Now, Rhonda Hartman-Smith against Jim Bailey. Don't sell this Bailey team short. They're plenty tough. Hartman is out first, but Bailey pulls ahead. Bailey hurts an engine. Looks like another one's going down, but Bailey picks up the win. Bailey, 5-14 with a 5, 267 miles an hour, but he puked another motor in the right lane. 
Look at this. You can see when the engine goes. Look at the smoke pouring off of that. Now Hartman blew the engine. That was an expensive contest. Now let's meet our Precision Gear Crew of the Week. John Yoke's Pro Stock Effort. Brought to you by Precision Gear. When your rear end is on the line, depend on Precision Gear. Here's John Lundberg. One of the most interesting stories to come out of the All-Pro Auto Parts Winter Nationals is the car right behind me. This totally independent, brand new race car, just 14 days off the frame jig, is the number one qualifier in Pro Stock with the quickest and fastest time ever recorded in IHRA drag racing for this class at 672 and over 205 miles per hour. I mean, that's just an incredible time for a 14-day-old car. I mean, the rule for years is you never take a new car to a major drag racing event. How many passes did you have in this automobile before you set that number on Thursday? That was the fifth run for the car. We had made four runs a couple of weeks prior. Uh, that was that was nothing with the DET like that. And that was the fifth run, the fifth and sixth runs. Uh, it was a 672 on the fifth and a 676 on the sixth. So the car is definitely there. It's doing its job, that's for sure. It's about the relationship between eldest sons and fathers, often tempestuous. Whatever has gone on in the past, these two have come together in one common effort, the campaigning of their pro stock Ford Thunderbird. Bob Yoke, you're a Ford dealer in Ellenboro, West Virginia. How did you find your way into pro stock? Well, I've always had a big attraction for drag racing and used to do it myself quite a lot. In fact, up until just last year, I personally raced too. John and I did it together. and. So, uh, you know, uh, now that we got to racing professionally, why, I kind of had to give that end of it up, and uh, John handling the controls of this car and, and our car we had last year and does a fine job. A small-town Ford dealer from West Virginia and his son have challenged the mountain of pro-stock drag racing. And if this weekend's performance is any indication, they'll climb it without too much difficulty. Watch as Consumer Reports fills this box with your free gifts and a big savings discount. First, the 1996 Buying Guide is yours free with your paid subscription. You'll find vital information, like the reliability records of today's most popular cars, how to get the best lease, how to buy a used car, and straight talk about which models to avoid. Tips on buying a computer and which printers performed best. What makes one TV picture look sharper than another? The best camcorders. Cellular phones. Product recalls that alert you to downright dangerous products and what you can do if you're stuck with one. It's essential information on hundreds of products all packed inside this free book. This book, How to Clean Practically Anything, is also free with your paid subscription. Keep wood floors, upholstery, drains, your VCR, nearly everything around the house clean and running smoothly. And you'll want to keep this chart handy. It shows you how to remove almost any stain. Both are yours with your risk-free trial subscription to Consumer Reports. You'll get 12 issues full of money-saving product ratings and recommendations. Included is the annual auto issue, packed with performance ratings, reliability records, and product recalls on current car models. Every issue does the homework for you on products and services like how you can save hundreds of dollars on car and home insurance, which child safety seats passed, and which ones failed our test. How to make heads or tails on the cheapest long-distance plans. What herbal supplements can really do for your health and energy, and how some can actually hurt you. Plus, you'll receive this subscriber bonus, the 1997 Buying Guide, when published. And risk-free means if you're not completely satisfied, we'll refund your money in full. Two free books, the 1997 Buying Guide bonus, a 60% discount off the cover price, and a 100% money-back guarantee, all for just $24. Consumer Reports. What you see is what you get. Phones open 24 hours. Call now. Back at the Winter Nationals, we are ready for the semifinals of Alcohol Funny Car. In the near lane, Bobby Balcom from Charlotte, North Carolina. And in the far, Jimmy Rector from Vernon, Alabama. Well, you know, Bob Rector stopped Scott Wise, who was the number two qualifier and a racing veteran here on the i -Trace circuit. And then a red light start right off the bat for Bauckham. So Jimmy Rector, the number seven qualifier, will go into the finals with a 599, 228 miles per hour. This track is looking great. The fives just keep on coming. And here's the man who leads the performance parade, Jim Lape from Myerstown, Pennsylvania. 
going up against Vaughn Smith from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And both of these guys have posted some pretty hot numbers. They're both running five-second ETs, the number one and the number four qualifier. A 93 Cutlass against a 95 Olds Achieva as we watch that ultra-slick, wind-dynamic, tunnel-tested front-end staging. In fact, neither man has been over six seconds in the two rounds thus far. Good launches. Boy, they're running great, and it'll be a decisive victory for Jim Lape. A 593, 237. You know, if nothing goes wrong, this is his event. No question, Lape is dominating, and that's surprising an alcohol funny car, which typically produces races like this one. He was aside of you the whole way, as you just said. 13 thousandths of a second true win margin. In fact, here he comes up behind you because he knows it was a drag race. Five. 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 Five what the fans are here to see and that's what we're here to do it's not like you're dominating here you had to work for well, that that's one that's correct it's a hard field i told you that earlier now you go into a car that's uh, go into the final against a car that's running the 590s three times so that's not going to be a walk who's that rector yeah uh we'll wreck him <laughs> <laughs> well you guys may not think jim lape is dominating but i do there's larry nance preparing for battle pro stock will be up next john yo getting ready too When I started losing my hair, it bothered me, and I finally got to the point where I just didn't want to think about it anymore. But I didn't want to do anything until I knew I could get the look that I wanted. The most important thing to me was the hairline. It had to look natural. Hair Club for Men is proud to announce a technological breakthrough. Call our toll-free number now to receive your free copy of Hair Club's exciting new technology brochure. I just love the idea that I can get out of the shower, towel dry my hair, blow dry it, and I'm gone. So call now and get Hair Club's new technology brochure. You'll see before and after photos of men like yourself who have already experienced the benefits of this innovative technology. I'd seen too many people that had tried surgery or products that promised to grow their hair back again. I wanted something that was simple, non-surgical, that would give me the results that I was really after. Call our toll-free number for your free brochure because Hair Club for Men really can make a difference. Arlington International Dragway, here's Brett Kepner with a track fact. He's the man behind one of the best known names in aftermarket equipment in all of automotive history. And as an amateur triathlete, his enthusiasm for fitness is equaled only by his dedication to the sportsman racers in drag racing, specifically in 1996 IHRA drag racing. Gary Hooker has been involved with this sport since its infancy and now continues to give even more back with the announcement that he indeed will back the 1996 class racing shootouts in modified eliminator superstock and stock eliminator racing. And the man himself is here to make sure that the program goes through. Gary, this is a heck of a move on your part, but it seems like, like I said, the enthusiasm you have for sportsman racing in general goes above a lot of manufacturers. Well, I think so. We, uh, for over 30, 32, uh, 33 years we've uh, started out in drag racing ourselves and, and uh, have always supported the grassroots racer both uh, with product which is uh, our main role to build things for people and uh, as well as uh, giving them the things that they need. Well, it's no small way, that's for sure. I mean, we're talking about a $50,000 package and, and even little things like a Best Appearing Sportsman Car Award. I mean, something just for, for the racers who put that much effort into their car. That's, that means an awful lot. Well, I, I hope it does. I hope it helps everybody. I, I, uh, I'm particularly impressed with the family environment out here and uh, that people come out here, camp. Uh, sometimes we see three generations uh, of a family and and uh, they're still participating in the sport and I hope we can help that continue in our small way. Hooker Headers, one of the great names in performance products. 
for a long, long time now. Pro stock action, there is Ron Miller, who has never been this far in IHRA national event competition. The Lebanon, Ohio driver is up against John Noble. Noble qualified number two with that brand new 1996 Monte Carlo. Equal reaction time. He's there first with a 680, 202 miles per hour. So John Noble is into the final. Now let's see who he will meet. There is Larry Nance, also having a great opening round of the 1996 season. We will ride aboard John Yoke's Ford and watch Nance in action. Nance in action indeed, a 4.03 reaction time, and this is what Yoke sees. Nance pulling away. He's trying to pull back. No, look at Larry Nance's crew as they are elated. Larry Nance goes into his first ever final. Meanwhile, Brett Kepner is making one of his frequent visits to Jim Bailey's pit. You can see where this engine block is burned. Gee, this seems kind of familiar. Haven't we been here before when we saw this engine block burn in the same place? Yeah, it's true. The Faber and Sons Top Fuel Dragster is burning equipment very similarly to its first round victory. But let's face it, 25,000 plus 25 is 50. Set of heads for another 15 and another set of heads for 50. About $100,000 worth of stuff sitting here. And they still have to put in a new motor for the final round. Now, Frank Vapor says the sole problem here is that Ronnie Swearingen's new engine combination needs more fuel. They're just not giving enough fuel. He swears up and down. It's going to be a bad boy when it does make it to the finish line under power. And he says the last thing he wants to do is get runner-up here three years in a row. Oh, my. Keep in mind, those top fuel burners need that fuel to help provide cooling as well as fire in those engines. Now, Pro Modified. Tommy Gray going up against... Chris Hunt, two gorgeous cars. Look at the 36 holes of Hunt. Tommy Gray and Hunt has to shut down as he crossed the center line. Gray on a straight run, just a little bit of smoke out the back. A 656, yes, he's in this drag race. Question about it, Chris Hunt punches out. You see it right there across the center line. You are done for the day. By that time though, Gray was long gone. Now to our next pair. Here comes Scotty Cannon who's already got that 641 with a one in the books at 217 miles an hour. He not only wants to beat Pat Moore, he wants to back up those numbers. What do you do if you're Pat Moore and your competitor just ran a 641 and worse yet, he's Scotty Cannon. You go for a hole shot. It's his only chance. Let's see if he tries to lay a tree on Cannon. Most equal reaction times, 517 to 518. Here comes Scotty, another 40s on the way, 647, 215 incredible miles per hour. And that will back up those national marks for Scotty Cannon. Look at a great drag race. Cannon actually a little squirrely there on the concrete. Ah, but he can drive, Bob, straightens that new Corvette out, and bang. And so our finals are set in all four pro classes. Jim Lape getting ready. We'll be back. My brakes are gone. Any chance I could get that fixed in a couple of hours? Tell you what, leave it here. I'll see what I can do. Check in periodically. I was wondering, how's my car coming? I have three of my best guys on it right now. With Pep Boys, 12 service bays and expert technicians, you're in and out fast. 26,000 items, tires and service too. Pep Boys, everything but gas. Read my Discover Card statement. Now this ought to be an adventure. Here's a gift for Betty. She's my wife, my dad, the kids, the kids, the kids. Shop with your Discover Card in the Adventure Discovered Value Book for rebates on the Wizard of Oz video, Hasbro toys and games, and more. Send in your Discover Card receipts and you could get over $240 back. My brother, Betty's folks, the kids, the kids. It pays kids. to discover. Look in the mail for your value book. ESPN asked me to say a few words about their ESPN Bud Light Big Monday promo, but since it ain't in my contract, I'll let the cat with the monster truck voice clue you in. Go to a participating Bud Light retailer and pick up an entry form and schedule. Select your weekly Big Monday winners. Mail them in. If you're the lucky bum whose entry is drawn and all your picks are correct, you win a free trip to the championship week game of your choice. Otherwise, you get a bunch of ESPN Bud Light merchandise. It ain't bingo, baby.
Welcome back to Darlington, South Carolina, where the sun is getting low and it is happy hour. Finals coming up in all of our professional categories. We will begin with Top Fuel, where Jack Ostrander, the number one qualifier, will meet Jim Bailey, who has been burning up parts this weekend. Boy, indeed, he has an Ostrander with a brand new sponsor, has the money to pop those bullets in. Frank Faber and Sons do not. It's very much of a budget operation, but you know what? They'll give it their best shot here in the final. You heard Brett Kepner say earlier, they've spent almost $100,000 worth of parts to get to this point, and they've still got one pass to go. Well, nobody said drag racing was cheap, Bob. No question about it. See Ostrander being backed in over the sticky rubber streaks laid down during the burnout. Bailey does the same. You know, this could be very, very important, although it's not as critical on this new trick surface that Darlington has. There's traction just about everywhere. But if you get your driver lined up outside those tracks, the race could end right there. You go up and smoke right off the starting line. Consider 5,000 horsepower thrust to the rear tires all at once, and there it happens as the clutch comes in too quick. Now an engine explosion. It's whose lucky day is it going to be? Jack Ostrander with a 590, 156 miles per hour. Both men going for performance. In the left lane, Bailey goes up in smoke. Then in the right lane, out comes the bottom end of the engine for Ostrander. He will limp to the finish, the champion. Just looking at the motor, you'd say that is one of the least pretty power plants you've ever seen. Actually, all the way around, it was one of the least pretty wins you could have possibly asked for. What a weird way to go. I, I, don't, I don't really know what happened this time. This, is, this was a new motor, so... A lot of fire almost immediately. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Uh, it, it left pretty decent, but then, uh, I don't know. You, it was if up. I know you, you had to be looking around. Where was he? Oh, I was... <laughs> I thought for sure he was going to come by, but... You know, I just... I, I got to thank my Vista Foods guys. Vinny and, and the Rocky Mountain guy and the 300 bull guys, all, all the people that are involved in this thing, it's just, this is great. It's still a heck of a team effort. I mean, everybody on the crew is your buddy. I mean, oh, oh yeah, we don't have any paid help. Everybody just comes to help. So it's just, it's a great thing. Well, all these guys in the red and white shirts and this man are leading the world championship. I love you, man. And that is the point, isn't it? He is the world championship leader. Now we will meet the leader in alcohol funny car. Jim Late burns him in. He gets set to meet the red machine of Jimmy Rector. You know, they'll be in no hurry to stage these cars because the alcohol cars actually build more horsepower as they try and put heat into the motor. So they're never in a big hurry to stage up. Now, one danger you do have is if you take too long to stage that car, the heat that you lay down on the track with that burnout can go away. Stops batting down. Late pulls into position. He has been the statistical leader throughout the weekend. So Rector is going to have his work cut out for him in the near lane. Rector will try the whole shot. Does a good time with a 456. Is that enough? No. Rector having a little bit of problems. Jim Late continues to dominate. 594, 238 miles per hour. A spectacular weekend for Late in the right lane, carrying those wheels just that little bit. Both cars going straight, then a bit of a wiggle in the left lane for Rector. That's all it took. Late drives around him. Well, I'll tell you what, for a day that was probably the quickest and fastest overall, I'm talking average now in IHRA history, obviously you recorded a world ET record earlier. To come out in this final round against a guy that was that tough, you knew he was going to be there. He did leave on you, but horsepower won at 594. New speed record for IHRA at over 238. I love it. I love it. Got to thank Keyport Toyota Stores again. I got to thank Susquehanna Valley Insulators. You got a bunch of new ones this year. Yeah, I got Castro. Castro's been with me for a while. Eric Sindrich for keeping my blowers fresh and helping me at this race. He's a great help. He runs an alcohol dragster of his own. Of course, custom painting for keeping this thing looking good. I Trey, going to the racetrack, and there again, the sunshine. <laughs> and I'll tell you, for a guy that just announced his intentions to go for the whole season, that's a pretty scary thought for the rest of these people, that's I think. That's what I'm here for, scare them. You did. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. We're going to have some fun with Jim Lape this year. Meanwhile, back at the starting line, Larry Nance, all strapped in. We'll be back. It's Saturday afternoon, almost game time. The TV's on, your feet are up. 
you've got the remote control in one hand, a great tasting ice cold Miller Lite in the other. And as you take that first ice cold sip, there's only one way to describe it. This Subaru Outback is pretty impressive. Not wrong there. It gets better gas mileage than a Cherokee, holds a turn tighter than a Blazer. Don't forget acceleration. Acceleration. That's right. Goes zero to 60 faster than an Explorer. Competition must be worried. Oh, yeah. You're scared stiff. Subaru Outback, the world's first sport utility wagon. You're lucky. You only think. Everyone is out to get you. Sabres and Penguins, tonight, 7.30. ESPN2, lucky you. Getting low in Darlington, South Carolina is the opening event of the 1996 IHRA Snap-on Tools National Championship Trail begins to wind down. Pro Stock Final coming up, and it's an interesting combination. There is Larry Nance. Goes about 6'10 from Akron, Ohio. He'll be going up against John Noble, who is about 5'8, I would guess, from Melville, New York. But both men in brand new 96 Chevy Monte Carlos, both men with 802 Bowtie V8s. Number two qualifier John Noble has to be the favorite to win right here, even though they are very equal. It's going to come down to starting line reactions, and Larry Nance has been the best off the starting line all day long. Well, you bet Larry Nance came in his last reaction time, 4.03, just three one-thousandths of a second off of perfect. He might be transferring some of those quick reflexes from the ball court over, Bob question about it he is an athlete come the revs away they go 423 react for Larry Nance he's out first problems for Noble in the far lane Nance will win it Nance had him covered anyway a 779 165 miles per hour as he pops the new twin shoots as required by the new IHRA rule if you're going over 200 miles an hour you've got to have two parachutes another look Good launches for both drivers. Nance gets a little squirrely, driving like a veteran. Yes, indeed, with wheels off the ground. And he picks up his first professional victory in his first pro race. Now, the vastly experienced guy, Scotty Cannon, going up against this beautifully turned out replica 38 Chevy Coupe of Tommy Gray. And once again, Ted, in pro mod, it's the nitrous boosted, normally aspirated engine against the supercharged alcohol burning mill. And the favorite cars, the nostalgia cars. Now the idea of the weight advantage is the nostalgia cars called the shoebox because it's pushing a lot of air with that flat front end right there. However, Idre may have a problem with all these 63 Corvettes come out because if you look at the front end of Scotty Cannon's car or any of the other 63 vets, they aren't very flat, Bob. They look like a wedge. Absolutely. All important air getting to that blower. At the launch, Gray actually puts the tree on Scotty Cannon. Will Cannon have the horsepower? No, Gray took it away at the top end charge of 214 miles per hour for Cannon. But that whole shot's the difference. Tommy Gray, 658. Scotty slowed to a 663. Look at it again. See, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Scotty's not doing a straight line. He will not go to victory lane third national event win. Here comes something not too many people have ever gotten, and that's... Play it again. No, I can't do it without Yeah, he can't do it without it. <laughs> that's a compliment. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's a rarity there, but let's face it. For you to come out with a new car, first round today, you didn't know where you were. You didn't know where you were until the semis. Now, I tell you, I want to thank Doug Kirk, his father, Rick Jones, Roy, the whole bit, because all of them helped us. We were lost on the clutch. Uh, this is a new motor we just set up, new car, first race. So, uh, I think we got some promise ahead of us here. Uh, but I got to thank a lot of people to help me, precision gear and all that. And I want to especially thank my wife for letting me come here on Easter to race. No question about that. Interestingly, Ted, no repeat winners from a year ago. No, and that pro stock winner, Larry Nance, what a way to start your pro stock driving career. Congratulations to all of our champions.
Coverage of the All-Pro Auto Parts Winter Nationals has been brought to you by McGuire's Car Care Products for that fantastic finish. I'm Bob Barsha for Ted Jones and Brett Kepner. Good to see Buddy Burkett back at the racetrack after her big accident a year ago. It took us three tries, but the season is underway. So long for now from Darlington, South Carolina. A sore back kept superstar Mario Lemieux out of action Saturday, but tonight Super Mario returns to his house, the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, to take on the Buffalo Sabres. Way in Butts Creek. Hi everybody, I'm Bob Barsh along with Ted Jones. This is the President's Cup Nitrous Nationals Round 3 on the International Hot Rod Association Snap-on Tools National Drag Racing Calendar for 1996. A Nitrous Nationals features all of the stars of the IHRA with the exception of Top Fuel, giving us lots of time to talk about guys like Jim Lape in the near lane up against Mike Pressler in the first round of Alcohol Funny Car. Late driving very well, a great reaction time. Bob picks up the win with a 6.04. This guy has really been hot this year, dominated the Winter Nationals. Absolutely, won the Alcohol Funny Car Championship at the season opening Winter Nationals. Now we'll move on to our next pair. This is Corky East, track owner from Papillion, Nebraska, going up against Melinda Green. Melinda qualifies for the IHRA events off and on. She's number 14 today and looks like she's giving Corky a little uh, trouble, but Corky East pulls it out with a 598, so that's the way they're going to play today. There's a very tricky racing groove here at Bud's Creek, and the right lane appears to be the place to be. Now in the far lane will be Jimmy Rector. We mentioned that Jim Leif has pretty much dominated things this year. Rector coming on very strong out of Alabama. He's up against Canadian Larry Dobbs. Rector picked up the win at Tulsa, was runner-up at the Winter Nationals, and begins to do that again with a 6.04 impressive time. 4.58 reaction time, one of the better bulbs we've seen thus far in the class. Now in the near lane, Tony Bogolo, who has appeared twice on tour this year, but has yet to get out of the first round. Here's a guy who won two events last year, including this one. He's going up against Bobby Bauckham. Well, he definitely knows how to drive this track out of Hamilton, Ohio, just north of Cincinnati. Has been running the i -tray circuit for a long time. Does a nice job off the starting line and a 599. He'll take that at 227. So we have two cars under six seconds. Jim Lape right there, the points leader coming in. He's going to have to step it up to keep track of Corky East and Tony Bogolo. Now he's got second generation racer Todd Vinny from Phillips Ranch, California. Vinny, the son of Ken Vinny, who developed a lot of famous heads used in drag racing, an alcohol engine expert staging very carefully. Wheels up off the pad, causes them to lose a little bit of control. Vinny now starts drifting into that concrete wall, finally has to feather it out a little bit, and of course the easy win will go to Jim Lake. Boy, Vinny, nice job of driving there, pedaling it as best he could, but you cannot give a guy like Jim Lake that sort of an advantage. Now here's an interesting situation. Corky East and Tony Bogolo, the only two cars we've seen under six seconds so far, they will meet here in the quarterfinals. Yes, this easily could be the finals, Bob. They take long burnouts, by the way, these alcohol funny cars, because heat buildup is not a problem with these alcohol engines. Alcohol burns very, very cool. The escape hatch you see kicked open right there on the car for Corky East is to get the smoke that builds up in there from the burnout. A lot of tire smoke builds up in that uh, compartment. We mentioned that Tony Bogolo is the defending champion in the President's Cup Nitrous Nationals. He also won the IHRA Summer Nationals at Morocco, Indiana, and finished third in the season-long points chase. These cars will also take their time in staging. You see the crew chief motioning him into the beams right now, and then at one point, he will let the car go, and it's up to the driver to finish the staging job. The stage beam located approximately seven and three-quarter inches from the starting line area. cars 
Free stage. Now stage. Good launch. Clean launch for Corky East. He has the advantage off the pad. Will he take it? Corky East is on a pass. Not a five, though. 6 0 oh, 6. 231. But his wind light's on. Absolutely. That's the important thing. Get there first without fouling at the Christmas tree. Now, here comes Scott Wenny from Spring City, Pennsylvania, going up against proven winner Jimmy Rector, who qualified under six seconds. We asked him about his mechanical setup for the race. I put a new blower on it yesterday on that 597, and I had to call it real conservative. And I started to pull it off and save it for later rounds, but after the field got so tough, I'm just going to leave it on. But the uh, car's got more in it. Will we get it out? You know, like I said, I'm going to leave the car basically just like I had it the first round. Well, we'll see if the combination that he used in qualifying works for Jimmy Rector. Atmospheric conditions are everything to these racers. And today's conditions may be quite different from what he qualified in. They are away. Oh, Rector does a driving job of 4.56 reaction time. He is on a pass, Bob. 5.96, the low ET thus far in eliminations, 234 miles per hour. Now it'll be Von Smith against the four-time world champ, Mark Thomas. He's concerned about this field, too. You come over here and, and look at the amount of cars here. I mean, I don't know what there's exactly, but I heard 30, 32 cars. So that means there's double the amount of cars that even get to race in this field that were here. So when you narrow it down to that many guys trying to run that good to get in this field, there's some tough competition. You throw in the fact that we've got fantastic air, fantastic racetrack, and it's just anybody's drag race. I mean, the field is so tight. I think the bumps are 619. When you've got just that little bit of variance, it's just a tough deal. Many make the toe, but few are chosen. These are a couple of survivors, Von Smith and Mark Thomas. Mark qualified number two in this field, and he really needs a victory to get back in that points chase, but he's in trouble at the eighth mile mark. Von Smith, a 6.05 to Mark Thomas's losing 6.10. Looked like a shortage of horsepower at mid-track for the four-time world champ. That's unusual. In the semifinals, Jimmy Rector will meet Jim Lape, and Corky East will go up against Von Smith. Smith, by virtue of the quicker ET, will have lane choice against East, while Rector will have lane choice in his battle with Jim Lake. Welcome to the land of blue crabs and black-eyed Susan, Southern Maryland, home of Maryland International Raceway at Bud's Creek, site of round three of the 1996 IHRA Snap-on Tools National Event Season, the President's Cup, Nitrous National. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bob Varsha. For students of American history, it's hard to beat the Chesapeake Bay Area, where it lurks around every corner. And so it is here at Maryland International Raceway, where drag racing fans have been coming for decades to watch their heroes in action, in particular, the door slammer categories of pro stock, pro mod, and the various sportsman categories that led to the creation of those professional classes. Right now, let's go to Ted Jones, who's standing by with one of the hot pro stocks of 1996. You know, Bob, to be competitive and take the points lead in IHRA Mountain Motor Pro Stock competition, you need a big engine. Now, currently in 1996, the hot setup has to be 813 cubic inches with IHRA having an 815 limit. The current points leader has a brand new Rick Jones prepared 1996 Monte Carlo with an 802. That's right, I said 802 cubic inch, two-year-old Sonny Leonard motor. And he may be switching to a John Cozzi engine. It's John Noble from New York. All right, John, a Cozzi motor in a Monte Carlo, what's the deal? Well, uh, at the end of last year, we struggled along for a little while. We really didn't have much power. We built the motor on our own, and John helped us. Out of the clear bull, he come strolling in our pits and said, I'll give you a hand. Took the motor, redid it for us, and put us right in the middle of the show towards the end of last year. When the winter time came, I asked him, I said, hey, John, I give you a shot at a Chevrolet. You want to do a Chevrolet? He seemed uh, tickle pink about it, so he's doing it. This one's going to be an 813. Oh, I think it's like 812, yeah. You're not worried that all of his experience is with a Ford engine? No, I'm not worried. I, I think uh, it's gasoline, air, and uh, pistons, and I think it's all the same, really. Now, you're doing all of this with a two-man crew. Two-man. Me and my crew chief, Kenny Sevier. We work good together. 
I'm a hands-on guy. I'm a hands-on driver. I, I, I drive. I know the motor. I do the clutch. Kenny helps me with everything. Uh, Kenny does the clutch. You know, we both can do everything. So to have more guys just kind of raises the expense. And um, sometimes you get in each other's way. I Trey Mountain Motor Pro Stock Racing began in the southern United States and was always dominated by those drivers. Very soon, John Cozzi, the legendary Pro Stock Ford engine builder, will build a GM engine and put in this General Motors car, which is manned by two crewmen from New York. A very unusual combination, but hey, he has the current points lead, and he's committed. Coverage of the IHRA President's Cup Nitrous Nationals is brought to you by Precision Gear. When your rear end is on the line, depend on Precision Gear. We'll be back to Bud's Creek in a moment to pick up the action in Pro Modified. You're looking at the man at the eye of the storm. Stay with us. Watch as Consumer Reports fills this box with your free gifts and a big savings discount. First, the 1996 buying guide is yours free with your paid subscription. You'll find vital information, like the reliability records of today's most popular cars, how to get the best lease, how to buy a used car, and straight talk about which models to avoid. Tips on buying a computer and which printers performed best. What makes one TV picture look sharper than another? The best camcorders, cellular phones, product recalls that alert you to downright dangerous products, and what you can do if you're stuck with one. It's essential information on hundreds of products, all packed inside this free book. This book, How to Clean Practically Anything, is also free with your paid subscription. Keep wood floors, upholstery, drains, your VCR, nearly everything around the house clean and running smoothly. And you'll want to keep this chart handy. It shows you how to remove almost any stain. Both are yours with your risk-free trial subscription to Consumer Reports. You'll get 12 issues full of money-saving product ratings and recommendations. Included is the annual auto issue, packed with performance ratings, reliability records, and product recalls on current car models. Every issue does the homework for you on products and services like how you can save hundreds of dollars on car and home insurance, which child safety seats passed, and which ones failed our tests, how to make heads or tails on the cheapest long-distance plans, what herbal supplements can really do for your health and energy, and how some can actually hurt you. Plus, you'll receive this subscriber bonus, the 1997 Buying Guide, when published. And risk-free means if you're not completely satisfied, we'll refund your money in full. Two free books, the 1997 Buying Guide bonus, a 60% discount off the cover price, and a 100% money-back guarantee, all for just $24. Consumer Reports. What you see is what you get. Phones open 24 hours. Call now. Welcome back to Bud's Creek, Maryland. Bob Barsha, Ted Jones with you. Now let's meet the third member of our ESPN Drag Race broadcast team. Here's Brett Kepner. Well, gentlemen, each and every year, the Snap-on Tools President's Cup Nitrous Nationals present some of the great performances of every season. But this time around, we saw world record acts. But we saw more drama than normal in the qualifying sessions. And let's face it, there needed to be. Whenever you have the quickest fields in history, everything's going to go down big time. As a matter of fact, look at Pro Stock Eliminator, where Roy Hill and Larry Nance didn't qualify. Jerry Yeoman was the one that shocked everybody in pro stock with a four hundredths of a second qualifying advantage. His 6.74 second run was only one hundredth of a second off the world of last time record. Pro Modified, though, was where all the action was. 6.69 seconds just to get in the thing. It was the quickest field in history. 39 cars vying for 16 positions. But I can talk about numbers all day. The only one that matters was Scotty Cannon. In one of the most demoralizing passes in the history of Pro Mod, as far as the rest of the competitors are concerned, he ran 6.41 seconds at 219 miles per hour, quicker and faster by light years than anybody has ever dreamed of running in this class, and he backed them both up for world records. The Pro Alcohol Funny Car contingent saw the most drama, like I was saying. It was this car, Jim Lake's Pennsylvania Old Scumless, that won the Winter Nationals that wasn't even qualified going into the final session on his last chance. 5.89 seconds on a near world record 238 mile an hour speed to take the number one spot in the second quickest field ever. Now what that's going to translate into race day is a war. Obviously everybody's got the power and the racetrack so it may just be an out horsepower battle. We'll have to find out. Bob Marshall, what are the weather stats? 
Brett, they are great for some eye-popping numbers. Temperature about 70 degrees, 60 percent humidity, and the barometric number right where these racers want to see it. Oh, what am I saying? They always want to see it better and better, but they've got great conditions right now. As we get set for Pro Modified, this is Brian Gam against Pat Moore. Pat Moore, who's been on a hot streak lately, was the winner at Tulsa, but not this time. Brian Gam with a 663 puts Moore on the trailer. And that is an achievement. Last year, Pat Moore won this event with the quickest time ever by a nitrous car to that point. Now, continuing with first round action, this is Brad Jeter against Ken Regenthal. Two of those new 1963 Corvettes, that's the hot body this year, and Ken Regenthal upsets the number three qualifier with a 667. Now, the reigning Pro Mod World Champ in the near lane is Tommy Mooney with a 63 Corvette racing Ed Hoover here. Mooney failed to get out of the first round of the season opener and then could not attend the second round of the season due to a family emergency. And more problems here for Mooney. He breaks once again, so Tommy Mooney really plagued, managed to qualify number two. Now Ed Hoover puts him on the trailer. Qualifying is nice, but you want to go rounds to rack up points. Now in the foreground, there is Scotty Cannon. You heard Brett describe the tear. He is on this weekend, already has the world record in hand as he goes up against Dale Brinsfield. Scotty Cannon, can anyone stop him? I doubt it. 651, 216, and he shut off a little early, Bob. That and he didn't get his traditional quick start. We'll watch for the Killer Edge Mater as we move on into the quarterfinals. Here's the beautifully turned out antique Chevy of Midwestern Chevy car dealer Carl Boyer going up against Ed Hoover, the man who set down Tommy Mooney. Stopped the world champion, qualified number 15, so he's not even supposed to be here against Carl Moyer. But hey, he deserved it. He made his way in. A nostalgia car against one of the late model cars. Now remember, the nostalgia car gets a 100-pound weight break. Why they built it. Runner-up at the Alabama Nationals last year was Carl Moyer. As you can see, very swoopy body work on both cars, whether you go for the vintage style or the more contemporary body panels. And just for the record, Moyer's car is a 1938 Chevrolet, fans. It's also nitrous, boosted, normally aspirated this year. Last year, it was a supercharged car. Moyer, first to finish. With a 447 reaction, he went a 671. Hey, this guy's in this race for real. Absolutely. Carl Moyer's got it working. Now here comes Brian Gam from Lucasville, Ohio. He'll be going up against the similar 63 Corvette of Ken Regenthal. Of course, Ken's been running Corvettes for a long time. Yes, he has. He started out in iCherry's top sportsman division with the Carolina Hooker Corvette and uh, did very well with that. So Pro Modify was a natural progression for him. He's giving up cubic inches, 706 for Gam, just 632 for Regenthal. Both cars taking their time staging. Both the normally aspirated with nitrous oxide injection. Both guys do a lot of match racing, so they're used to working on tricky track surfaces, racing a lot. I'm sure they've got their timing down pat for the start. Listen to the RPMs up high now against those rev limiters, and Brian Gam has the jump off the starting line. Oh, at the eighth mile, they're dead equal. Crossing the finish line first is Gam with a 670. Regenthal had a 6. 70, the starting line jump got that. Now here comes Shannon Jenkins in the car that Tommy Mooney took to the World Championship last year. Jenkins was the crew chief last year. In fact, he is again this year, but he also gets to drive, and he is the better performing racer of the two right now. Going up against the name we haven't seen before this year from Bolton, Ontario, Canada, this is Tony Pontieri. And the fans are familiar with that 67 Camaro of Pontieri because he match races in the northeastern part of the United States. Now he's come down to run in open competition and he has his hands full. Brett talked about the brutal qualifying. Same thing applies to Pro Modified. Some interesting DNQs include former world champ Tim McCamus, Bill Kuhlman, and Quain Stott. Almost an identical start at the eighth mile. They're equal now. Look at that Willie's fly on top end. <laughs> nice driving job for Jenkins with a 661. Might credit Tommy Mooney for not going to his teammate and saying, hey, I want my car back. Now here comes the man at the eye of the storm. This is Scotty Cannon, who set that incredible world record in qualifying. 641, 219 miles an hour. He's going up against Chris Hunt from Killen, Alabama. Scotty Cannon's killer red mater. He's also gone with the 63 Corvette body style and really made it work. But Chris Hunt's car, a 1936 Oldsmobile, as you see it right now on the screen, is one of the most gorgeous cars in the field. 
Now, both cars qualify for the weight break that Ted mentioned earlier, but look at the difference in aerodynamics. That boxy car in the background, a low-slung Corvette in the foreground, Scotty definitely has the advantage when it comes to coefficient of drag. You know, the ITRA officials may have to take a look at the rules and exclude the Corvette from the weight break because they are naturally aerodynamic. Of course, recently, Zora Arcus Duntoff, father of the Corvette, passed away. Problems for Chris Hunt. This will be an easy pass for Cannon. Cannon with a 6.49, and Chris Hunt had about a half a second jump right off the starting line, too. Boy, with the legendary Arcus Duntoff, be happy with what Scotty Cannon has done with his creation. Pretty much straight through the right lane, but over on the left, Big 90-degree left-hander there for Hunt, but he got it straightened up. Nice piece of driving. A look at the semifinal brackets in Pro Modified. Carl Moyer and Brian Gam. Gam will have the lane choice due to the quicker ET. In the other bracket, Scotty Cannon, Shannon Jenkins. ET, forget about it. Cannon is getting quicker with each passing round. We'll have to see if he can keep it up. Now let's take a look at all subjects technical as we present this edition of Holly's Race Mechanic. Brought to you by Holly. The Performance Edge. Here's Ted Jones with Professor Roy Hill. Well, Bob, this week our Holly race mechanic is down here in the pit area changing tires. Why are you changing tires, Roy? Well, it's not just the tire. We always run these Goodyear tires, but we're changing wheels. We went out the tracks, got a lot of bite initially. We leave the starting line, it snaps the tire loose in second. Third gear, I'm running half throw. Fourth gear, tell you, I run 170 mile an hour. Normally you go over 200. 205, six. We have to put some bite in this car. So we have chose to go with the beadlock wheel versus the normal wheel, which plants the tire harder on the ground in third and fourth gear. Now explain what you mean by a beadlock, Roy. All right, you see this bolt pattern around here and it's a big wide bead on the wheel. That is a bead lock. It's bolted down. It locks the sidewall of the tire. It pushes the weight down to the ground and makes it hook harder versus the normal wheel is just like your passenger car that you drive up and down the highway. So to find out the secret of more traction, we turn to Holly's race mechanic. He always has the answer. Thanks, Ted. We'll turn next to Pro Stock, including the menace from Melville, John Noble. Stay with us. Explosive, uncontrollable. It's zero to 300 or zero to oblivion in a heartbeat. It's the fastest, often most terrifying few seconds in sport, and anything can happen. Now, for the first time, you can own the most spectacular collection of crashes, crunches, and things gone terribly wrong with Crash and Crunch video. See nitro belching quarter mile monsters, soaring top fuel hydros, stock cars, door slammers, and more. Order Crash and Crunch today and receive absolutely free nighttime fuel and fire and track freak featuring high octane explosions, rolling fireballs, jet dragsters, and other freaks of the strip. To slow down after watching these videos, you better pack a chute. Order today and receive all three videos for only $19.95 plus shipping and handling. These videos are going fast, so order now. Call 1-800-664-5600 or send check or money order to the address on the screen. Satisfaction guaranteed. to the President's Cup Nitrous Nationals here at beautiful Bud's Creek, Maryland. Bob Varsh along with Ted Jones and Brett Kepner. Good crowd on hand enjoying the action. Here's first round action from Pro Stock. In the near lane, Lloyd Cheek. In the far lane, Robert Patrick. Robert Patrick, who was hot, just won the Tulsa event, qualified number five here. Let's see if he can continue his winning ways. No! Floyd Cheek breezes by with a 688, and he moved into the quarterfinals. That was a shock. Robert Patrick, one of the young lions in pro stock racing right now. Speaking of shocks, the guy in the far lane, Doug Kirk, has had more than his share this year. He hasn't gotten out of round one, and he is a former world champion. Here he is going up against Steve Spies. 
Ah, but he's got that 1996 Dodge Avenger running. You heard me right. I said Dodge. Doug Kirk moves into the next round with a 683. A very cool car. Good to see Doug Kirk getting it back on track. Now here's John Noble, our points leader, going up against Angelo Alesi. Both of them up against the rev limiters. Good shot. And Alesi completely out of shape. Crosses the outer boundary line. Shuts it down. That's all he could do to get it straight. Meanwhile, John Noble is on a rip. 684. He matches the number. Keep in mind, John Noble is a part of that two-man crew, and that includes John himself. They are doing a great job. Now let's pick up the action in round two. Carlton Phillips against Floyd Cheek. This is a good matchup. Number 12 and number 13 qualifiers and a red light for Floyd Cheek. He knew he had to push that tree against Carlton. So Carlton Phillips moves into the semifinals with a 739. Keep an eye on Carlton Phillips. He usually pulls some pretty good starts. Meanwhile, here comes Doug Kirk in that beautiful Dodge Avenger. 96 mount, 814 cubic inches of low power. Going up against John Noble. Now here's one we're gonna wanna pay close attention to, Ted. Remember, Noble is the number three qualifier with that two-man crew in that little two-year-old Sonny Leonard motor, 802 cubic inches, but hey, it's been working. John Noble, runner-up at the Winter Nationals to open the season. He's also number one in points for the year-end Sunoco Pro Stock Showdown with the big bucks go on the line for all of the top qualifiers throughout the season. You can bet that Noble knows Kirk has got it together finally with this Dodge Avenger. By the way, the cubic inch is 814. Now, how they got that much out of a Dodge motor, I'll never know. We'll see if it holds together. Meanwhile, Noble, of course, just 802 cubic inches of Chevy power with all of that help from Ford specialist John Kazi. Noble also knows that you can't cut Kirk any slack. He's very quick on the lights, always has been. Saw John Noble directed to the line by his entire pit crew. A two-man operation against the rev limiters, and it looks like Noble is out last. Doug Kirk is out first at the eighth mile. It's nearly even. Here they go down to the finish line. Doug Kirk with a 688 stops Noble 690. Now with a big smoky burnout to heat up those tires. John Yoke, number one qualifier through the first two events of the 1996 season, number two this weekend at Bud's Creek. He'll be going up against Charlie Peppers out of Auburn, Georgia. Never count Charlie Peppers out. This guy's been running IHRA for a long time and is apt to upset anyone at any time. Running, of course, a John Causey engine, 810 cubic inches of Ford power. John Yoke, another of the young lions in pro stock competition. Not only was number one qualifier at the two previous rounds, he went to the semis in both with his West Virginia-based Ford. They'll come up against the rev limiters. There you hear him. And Charlie Peppers beat young John Yoke off the line. As a matter of fact, Yoke has got to lift. He's got problems. Peppers with a 689. Are you ready for that one, drag fans? I saw Yoke's front end bouncing a little bit. I think he porpoised a bit. We'll watch that right-hand lane. Everything looks good. Meanwhile, Pepper's on a haul in the left lane. Ah, there it is. Yoke got a little sideways, had to lift out of it. So Charlie Peppers, with a good pass, advances to the semifinals. Now our final pair. Quality Care Ford sponsorship from Canada for John Koenig chauffeur going up against Jerry Yeoman, who owns Tulsa International Raceway in Tulsa, although he is based in Kansas. And the big news for Jerry Yeoman, of course, that I know John Koenig chauffeur has to be thinking about right now is that he qualified number one with that Oldsmobile. One of those brand new $66,000 Sonny Leonard 814 cubic inch motors. You can tell why sponsorship is all important at this level of drag racing. In the near lane, Yeoman coming off a runner-up performance at the Grand American Nationals on his own racetrack. He is the number one qualifier, Koenig show for number nine, so on paper it should be Yeoman's race. Yeoman first off the line with a 460, Koenig show for breaks, so Yeoman on a single run with a 686. Hey, who needs a budget? Jerry Yeoman is going to the semifinals. We'll look at it one more time and watch for that break by Koenig Schofer as you see the front end come down right there before he got off the pad, and it was all over at that point. Meanwhile, Yeoman with a very good pass. Here's a look at the semifinals by one one hundredth of a second. Doug Kirk was quicker than Charlie Pepper, so he'll have lane choice. And Jerry Yeoman, by a wide margin, will decide which lane Carlton Phillips will start in in the semis.
Now, before we get back to the action, it's time for a track fact with Brett Kepner, who reports on how Scotty Cannon is keeping body and soul together. You know, after Scotty Cannon's initial 6.41 second, 219 mile an hour bomb on the rest of the pro mod field on the first day of qualifying, he came out on the second run to back those numbers up for a world record and broke something in half track. He came back and found out all it was was the throttle cable. Now, obviously, Cannon owns this race. The only way he's going to lose is if something stupid like that happens. So what did he do? He just hooked up two of them. Let's face it, you want to back up to keep that kind of performance in there? That's about as simple a preventive maintenance you could possibly come up with. Thanks, Brett. I said it was a track back. I didn't say it was high tech. There's action in the staging lanes. We'll be back. Australian. Abstract art. Beer. Foster's Australian for beer. Just what does it take to get in shape and stay that way? If you think you need to go to a gym to lose weight, get in shape, and have a body like this, think again. This is Bowflex. A real workout at home that's so good, we guarantee results in six weeks for your money back. Think about it. You could get results like tighter abs, finer lines, a stronger chest, and more defined legs in only six weeks. It's not magic. It's Bowflex. All of the most effective exercises, plus a great aerobic rowing feature, ready for a quick workout whenever you are. Nothing could be easier. The results you want are only six weeks away. Don't think about it anymore. Take action. Call us and ask for a free video and brochure on the machine that works like an entire gym. But fits anywhere in your home. ESPN asked me to say a few words about their ESPN Bud Light Big Monday promo, but since it ain't in my contract, I'll let the cat with the monster truck voice clue you in. Go to a participating Bud Light retailer and pick up an entry form and schedule. Select your weekly Big Monday winners. Mail them in. If you're the lucky bum whose entry is drawn and all your picks are correct, you win a free trip to the championship week game of your choice. Otherwise, you get a bunch of ESPN Bud Light merchandise. Ain't bingo, baby. International Hot Rod Association, Snap-on Tools. National event calendar continues here at Maryland International Raceway with the President's Cup Nitrous Nationals. Now it's time for this week's edition of Drag Review. Here's Brett Kepner with the story of the weekend, Scotty Cannon. As if there wasn't enough controversy already with Scotty Cannon in 1996 in Pro Modified, the President's Cup Nitrous Nationals have made certain of it. If you want to cause an uproar in any professional heads-up category, the best way to do it is put 15 hundredths of a second between yourself and the next closest competitor. And just for kicks, why not run eight miles an hour faster than anybody else? Cannon's performance at this Maryland International Raceway event rivals that of the ones he's produced in the past here. But this one was bordering on the ridiculous. A 6.41 second qualifying effort with a speed of 219 miles per hour was enough to cause sheer shock among the rest of the ProMod contingent. Considering the fact that he ran 641 twice and never once slower in three runs than 218 miles an hour, and the fact that Tommy Mooney, his arch rival, was the only close one, if you want to call it that, at 6.56 seconds, Cannon's newest performance dominance may be one of the single most significant in IHRA Pro Mod history. The big question is, where is it coming from? How in the world can you justify running 15 hundredths of a second quicker than the nearest competitor? Well, you know, when we first started racing this Pro Mod deal three years ago, and uh, that's about what I had everybody covered, and I think I was full of piss and vinegar, you'd say, wanting to whoop everybody, right? So, uh, you know, losing the championship last year kind of, it bothered me a lot. And I think it put me back in the mode I was in three years ago. So I'm 1,500 ahead again. So it's just a shame show. It's just a different day. I got a lot of crow that I want somebody to eat. And I got enough for two or three. So whenever they get ready, I'm ready. 219 miles an hour. If, if that's a good barometer of horsepower, that means this thing is so fast right now, there's not going to be, I mean, you, it's up to you to lose every race. Yeah, well, you know, with the first round here, it took uh, Brinsville. 8.65 seconds to stage the car after I stage. 
Uh, but it's a game. They've got to take every shot they can. Exactly. But, you know, the rule says you got like four seconds. But the starter gives him a better fin of the doubt. You know, I, I think the starters need to start paying attention because uh, you bring John Force over here and make him sit there long enough until his, you know, his, his stuff burn up on the starting line, I'm pretty sure I could outrun him. But uh, what would be my chances if I race him straight up? I'd like to see IHRA step in and start enforcing the staging rule so that we can race. Because, you know, I am out here for the fans and for everybody else and to put a show on. And, you know, if they won't let me do my job, I can't do it. I mean, somebody, you know, hits you in the nose with a damn hammer up or I can't drive the car. It's about the same difference. Do you believe that every other car should be running this fast? They should all be running this fast. Like I said, uh, they got these fancy dynos. They all have 2,000 horsepower uh, in November and in December. In January, they all got the world conquered. Well, they get to Darlington, and their junk won't run but 660s. I ain't calling herself junk because it's junk. They got the same junk I got. It's a figure of speech for me. All this stuff is basically junk. Well, uh, I don't have a dyno. I got a red dyno. So, I mean, I don't feel sorry for any of them. I mean, they're just going to have to step up and get their stuff to work. Like I say, I got motors for sale. 50 grand. It costs you 40 to build it, 10 grand for tune-up. It'd be a lot cheaper just to buy the motor out of the car. Does it surprise you then that people aren't right on you? Well, no, I don't think they work hard enough. They worried about Scotty Cannon and the Red Tomatoes. They don't worry about herself, you know, so that don't surprise me. I can see their problem. I've even told them. I shouldn't have told them nothing. Some wise butter probably should wise up and start working and probably start out running me, but I don't know if it will or not. I don't think, I, I think, I think they think they can't do it, and they got themselves convinced. There certainly are a lot of angles to this argument, but if you pay close attention to what Scotty says, you may realize that a lot of the answers may lie in his own personal work ethic. Certainly no one has ever accused Scotty Cannon's crew of not thrashing until 3 in the morning after qualifying is done or changing engines in a pool of grease and sweat during the daytime just to pick up an extra hundredth of a second. It doesn't matter how the job is done, but only that it is completed. That's this edition of Drive Review. Well, there you have it, folks. You can tear him down. He'll even sell you the motor out of the car. Scotty Cannon throw down the gauntlet for his competitors. We'll be back for Alcohol Funny Car. It is a well-known fact that there is presently no cure for hereditary hair loss. But before you try drugs or expensive surgery, did you know that often just by cleansing your scalp, you can encourage the growth of stronger, thicker-looking hair? These photographs are taken at 200 times magnification. On the left is a typical example of clogged follicles. The photo on the right clearly shows the proven cleansing action of the active ingredient in new Folimax Scalp Cleanser. Folimax is a safe, effective way to remove harmful deposits of oil, cholesterol, and sediment left by commercial shampoos. A clean scalp can release the growth of your own hair that's been blocked by clogged follicles, creating stronger, thicker-looking hair. Folimax can bring back the kind of hair you can take pride in. A fuller-looking head of hair will give you confidence and a better self-image, allowing you to feel youthful once again. Call the number on your screen and find out how Folimax can unlock the natural potential of your own hair. You can try Folamax with absolutely no risk, so call right now. We're discouraged from getting involved romantically with the people we cover, which is a pretty good policy, but uh, it, it happens. Think about Charlie Steiner. Say love is beautiful, but what Charlie has is beautiful. Welcome back to the President's Cup Nitrous Nationals, but it might just as well be the season opening winter nationals because this was our final round matchup in Alcohol Funny Car. Jimmy Rector and Jim Lake. And in that matchup, Rector came out in second place. Looks like a good run right here. Rector was first off the starting line. Oh, about three car lengths he put on Lape with a 598. Lape could not get in the fives on that run. Rector got away first, but only marginally, and then just drove away from him. In fact, Rector with the dirtier looking run in the left lane, but Lape just cannot get on even terms with him at half track. No, this is a solid horsepower win, Bob. And you might say his crew was a little bit interested in the result as well. They were excited to say the lead. No question, they knew that Lape was the guy they wanted to get around. Not necessarily in the race, but in the point. And that's the one that made the big buck. Now here was our Winter Nationals quarterfinals matchup between Corky East and Von Smith. It's a rematch here at Bud's 